So here in the front of the frame, this side actually looks pretty decent. There are some problems with it. Obviously the brake line's trash. This rubber hose is trash. There's a hole right here in the frame. You can see this is an automatic car, so it doesn't have the little pedestal here for the Z-bar. The VIN number is stamped right in the metal here. This section of the frame is actually really nice because it's been coated in oil, transmission fluid, and all kinds of other fluids. Over around this side, you can see somebody put the brake hose on way too tight and twisted it all up. So that's definitely screwed up. The little clips that hold the brake lines, the rubber brake lines to the frame are rotted off. And this is where it starts getting pretty rough. If you're afraid of rust, this is the point where you want to close your eyes. This is fine. This is fine. Okay, let's go. So you can see the rust is getting a little thicker. This cross member has some pretty decent pitting on it. If we cruise on down here, let's look at the trailing arm. You can see it's bent. Looks like it slid into something and whacked it that way. So this trailing arm is trash. This mount's still solid, obviously really pitted and gross. And then this is where it starts getting really bad. This, this whole rear section is pretty thin. And if you grab it, it's tough to tell on the camera because I'm kind of doing two things at once, but you can actually kind of wiggle this whole rear frame up and down because the metal is really thin. And then over here, you can see it's actually just like rotted out, just trash. It's buckled up here. Over here, it's got a buckle and it's just in terrible condition. You'll notice that this looks like that. And that's because that's what it's going to be. I actually had these things bent up. It's eighth inch steel, four inches tall, and these ones are 48 inches long, though I think I only need about 36 inches of it. And there's one for each side. This distance right here is two and a half inches on the top and the bottom. That's actually a little bit wider than this and the bottom. On the actual car, the top is just less than two and a half inches, and the bottom is I think it's closer to like two and a quarter or something like that. This rear piece right here, I actually bought that because that is actually a part you can buy. This is actually a little bit thinner metal. It's not eighth inch, I'm not sure exactly what it is. And it has the little um, cutouts for the body mounts, which you'll see up here. So you can see this one is actually cut out just like the replacement. But this, the factory rear metal here, it's actually angled right here and on this side, right here. So the new one is not. So I'm gonna have to do that when I install it because I assume there's a purpose there. I also have to rebuild these things. So I'm gonna have to make my own. I'm not gonna reuse those ones because they are rotted out and trash, especially on this side. That's kind of where we're at with the rear frame. I'm now gonna pull the whole back of it apart and then I'm gonna pull the front of it apart. We're gonna get the frame stripped down because I wanna flip it over and I wanna see how, how rotted out the bottom of it is. And we'll kind of see where that takes us. Now, once you're on the back of the frame and you wanna take the axle out, there's a few main points that you have to remove. There's this point right here, which obviously has a gigantic bolt in it. You gotta remove the shocks, which I already did. Up here, you gotta remove this bolt right here, which holds this um, centering arm or whatever you wanna call that. Once you get the panhard bar out, then this whole axle should drop out. All right, so now there is something we gotta talk about and it's called bolt organization. Now, 99.9% .9 of you are gonna ignore this and that's fine, but I just wanna get it out there because it is totally worth doing. When you take a car apart, Go buy yourself 200 sandwich, 100, 100 sandwich bags and label the bolts, even if it's one bolt, two bolts, panhard bar. So write what it is on the bag, put it in the sandwich bag, zip lock it so it doesn't fall out. And then, ready for this? Buy yourself one of these bins. This one's made by Sterilite. It's 66 quarts, I think. You don't have to buy 66 quart size, but this is awesome. These things, the lids clip on really nice and they're clear. The fact that they're clear, you can see what's in them. So if I go like this, you can see all the bins up there. The clear ones, I know what's in. Well, I know what's in them. The not clear ones, I have no clue. It's just, it's madness. So buy the clear bin, buy the sandwich bags, label the bags, put the bags in the bin, 
and then tuck the bin away until you're ready to use the bolts again. All right, this public service announcement is over. Let's get back to the work. The axle has been removed. Now you might be saying, Jeremy, that looks like a four nine inch rear axle, but it's not. This rear axle is actually a Chevy rear axle put in vehicles from 55 to 64. And the 55 and 56s had different axle lengths than the 57 to 64s. So although you can actually swap this center section from 55 to 64, you can only swap the axles from 57 to 64. The cool thing about these rear axles is that this front section comes out just like a four nine inch. The bad news is they tend to bend. So if you have a big engine and you're launching it at the, at the starting line of the drag strip, you can actually bend these axle housings so that they are no longer straight. Or, you know, if you have a low rider and you're putting some hydraulics in it, you can actually bend these axles. So, or the axle housings, I should say. And then the axles get stuck in the housing and then it's a pain to disassemble. What a lot of people will do is they'll either brace up the whole thing or they swap this out for a different section altogether. You could get these with a variety of gear ranges from the factory when they were new. You could also get a posi inside it or you could not. Most of them are not. If it was a posi, it had a big P right here, which this one does not. So we can assume it is not a posi rear axle, though it is possible to swap a posi center section in a non-posi rear axle housing. I can already see that there is a nut missing here and it looks like the bolt is rotted off. There's like not a thread left on it. That might be problematic for me. And that's it for the axle. Let's go back to the frame. So being that it is a wagon, the gas tank actually sits right here instead of right here for like a hard top or a convertible. Because of that, the fuel line is actually set up differently. So we'll take a little look and this is this is more for my memory than yours probably because I wanna know how this all goes back together. And I'm gonna just redo the fuel lines probably in a very similar way. Uh, other than that, I think it's pretty much similar to any hardtop chassis. All right, well, let's get going to the front next. I think we'll start pulling wheels and control arms and springs and stuff out of the front. We'll also get this drive shaft out, maybe take off the e-brake parts. Well, that's stuck on there pretty good. All right, let's just make this easy on ourselves. That's good. Probably not gonna work. Why would it, right? That wouldn't make a very fun video. Anybody else working in a cold garage? This is definitely not gonna work. Why am, I, why am I doing this? Before we get too deep into this, I feel like we need to have another chat. There's a couple auto parts that'll kill you every time. One of them, coil springs. Coil springs are the Dodge Viper of the auto part world. Now, Dodge Vipers, they actively try and kill the driver. So, springs, same way. Springs actively are trying to kill me right now so I have to be extra careful worth working with them. Before I go yanking this ball joint off, I'm gonna put a jack under the lower control arm and hopefully that will allow me to lower the control arm in a safe manner. The other thing that's in place right now is the shock. There's still a shock going down the center of the coil spring and that will also prevent the coil spring from jumping out and killing me. The problem is that there's a good chance I'm gonna ruin the shock if I do that but I don't care because the shock's going in the trash. I'm gonna loosen up the ball joint, not, not take the bolt off. I'm gonna put the jack under the control arm and then I'm gonna take the bolt, or actually I'm gonna knock it loose with a hammer so the knuckle is loose from the ball joint. And then I'm gonna take the nut off and then we're gonna ever so gently lower the jack. And then the coil spring is just gonna gently release. Everybody's gonna be happy, all right? Let's do that and just, just make it happen. Oh. 
Looks like we got a cotter pin. Forgot about that. Couldn't see it because it was so caked in mud. But it's there. If it's not three quarter, it's always seven eighths. Why? I don't know. It's just the way it is. And then we're gonna smash it with a hammer. Got it. Eh, it feels a little tight. Back it up a little bit. Oh, see? Now, because there's no weight on the frame, is the frame is gonna go up and the coil is uh, gonna push down on the jack. So that's fun. That's a really good time. I think this is one of those times, yeah, this is, this is an explosion waiting to happen. All right, so you'll notice I have a face shield on and that's because I wanna protect my face. So I'm gonna go ahead and unthread that nut. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna force the frame up, the control arm down, the control arm is gonna be caught by the jack. So the frame is gonna go up. Hopefully the shock holds it all in place because there is still a shock in the center. So hopefully that prevents the spring from going in my teeth. Wish me luck. Let's maybe hit this. Oh, okay. That worked. There is most definitely some pressure on this. And I think what's happening is the frame is going up. I can actually see it coming off the jack stand. It would be cool if we had some more weight on this. I think I'm gonna pile some sandbags on. Oh, poke the hole. Dang it. There it is. Still a bit of force in there, that's for sure. Perfect. So that went well. The bolts were definitely in there like swimwear and it was really tough to get them out. I had to use, you know, breaker bar, air gun, uh, PB blaster, all kinds of jazz so now we're gonna move on to the other side i think because i'm just trying to get this thing done you know just trying to get it done so we have now stripped the frame of all the suspension parts all that's left is the front sway bar some brake and fuel lines, and the parking brake uh, components. I have some feelings that the back of the frame right here is going to be rotted out. I'm gonna to need to replace sections of it. And that's okay, because I'm planning on replacing all of this anyways. So not a huge deal. All right, so I'm now on my way to go get a four by eight sheet of uh, steel. And it's 11 gauge, eighth inch. Not the most beautiful day I've ever been in. I just drove by a place that was a notary public, but also sells homemade chili. All right, so I just arrived here at the metal place and this place is cool as hell. And there's like gigantic pieces of steel on the ground that I totally would love to have. Let's take a quick look. So there's kind of a lot going on here because the frame is on its side and there's a bunch of junk behind it. So it's tough to tell what's happening. But the frame is on its side and now I can get a really good look at the bottom of the frame and just how bad it is. You'll see that right here, there's a hole. There's a hole there. And then as you go up, there's some more holes. There's some holes here. There's a hole up here. So it's not great in the back. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace all of the metal, all of it, here. That is gonna be fun. I'm gonna show you how we'll do that in a little bit, but first, I wanna make something. So right now, the frame is actually like balanced on this jack stand and that jack stand, and it is totally gonna fall over. What I did was I went behind my house and I found this metal beam thing and that metal beam thing, they were in the woods behind my house, so 
you know, why am I not using them? I'm gonna weld them together and I'm gonna make a frame stand that just holds the frame solid on its side. And that way it'll allow me to work on the frame on its side like this and I can do it in a safe way where the frame won't fall over and kill me. I'm gonna go ahead and weld up this, uh, this frame mount. So now that this is bolted in place, now I can walk over and I can shake this thing all around and it doesn't fall over. Notice there's two jack stands under here that are not actually doing anything anymore. So I'm actually gonna put a jack stand right under the middle of the chassis because I don't want all the pressure on the back because I'm gonna be cutting all that up. So I'm actually gonna put a jack stand under the, under the middle of it and hold the back of it up off the ground so that when I cut all that stuff out, it doesn't get all twisty and weird. All right, so the frame is obviously on its side. So I'm gonna start measuring where some of these things are in relation to the center of the frame because I'm gonna end up cutting a lot of this stuff off and I wanna know where it goes back on. I'm gonna hook on this tape measure. This is 22 and three quarters, 22 and seven eighths, 27 and a half, 27 and five eighths, 14 inches right to the front. It's again, 14 inches exactly. 13 and a quarter, 13 and an eighth, 32 inches exactly. We get 32 inches on the bottom as well. 26 and three quarters, 41 and a 16th, 18 and three eighths, nine and three eighths, nine and five sixteenths on this side. 43 and seven eighths is 41 and a half, 41 and a half, 49 and seven eighths, 50, 49 and three quarters, 49 and three or I'm sorry, 47 and three eighths. No, I'm gonna say seven inches. Seven and three eighths. Actually, it's three and seven eighths. And a half. 71, so that's good. Uh, this looks like 64. This is actually 64 and a half. 70 and seven eighths. 48 and three quarters. 48 and three quarters again. Gosh, 23 and 15 sixteenths. 53 and an eighth. 45 and an eighth. 44 and 15 sixteenths on the passenger side. All right, I think we have enough measurements. All right, so here's my game plan. I'm gonna cut out this giant structural support thing here. I'm gonna cut off this shock mount. I'm gonna cut out this thingy do here. And once those are all out of the way, I'll be able to cut out the whole inner C channel that makes up the inside of the frame here and I'll leave the outer part of the frame there. So I'm not gonna touch the outer section yet. I'm just gonna replace the inner box tubing on this side. And then once this side's done, I'm gonna do the top side. I'm gonna replace all of the inner structure. Then I'm gonna weld this back into place and I'll weld the shock mounts back on or I'll make new ones. I'm gonna weld this back in place or I'll make a new one. And then I will start replacing the outer sections of the frame as well. So I'm just gonna do it one piece at a time until the whole back of the frame is new and hopefully it'll go pretty smooth. I don't know, can't be worse, am I right? So let's get started. All right, so I just chopped it right here, right along the weld, right here on the weld, right here on the weld, and then right here on the weld. So. Bang, bang, bang. Well, we now have that piece out on the driver and passenger side. Wasn't too big of a deal to, to pull out, just kind of cut the welds and popped it out with a air chisel. So now we move on to probably the shock mount and maybe this bracket right here, or whatever you want to call this thing. Support? I don't know, whatever it is. So now the panhard bar brace is gone, the shock tower bracket is gone, and the center 
uh, structure thingy do, which holds the upper control arm, is now gone. I haven't taken the shock tower off of the top yet. I'll probably wait until I actually am ready to do that. I have no need to take it off at the moment. And now I'm gonna start removing this section of the frame, just the inside section, so that I can then rebuild it out of new steel, and I'll put it in place, and then we'll do the other side on the top. Then we'll, uh, we'll kind of see where it takes us. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just winging this. Let's start there and start cutting welds all the way down. Clearly I have a massive mess to clean up. I got like probably pounds of rust sitting here that has come out of the frame. And at this point it's stuck. The, I'm trying to separate this piece obviously. And up here, right in here, it's still welded to the center. So I gotta figure out how to disconnect that. I may just end up um, cutting it with like a plasma cutter or something like that or possibly a cutoff wheel and just get out as much as I can so that I can get this major piece out. And then I'll figure out what to do with the leftover stuff in here once I have the big part out. So I am going to probably tackle that next so that I can get this whole inner frame piece out. So with this piece out now, I'm gonna go over there to my big sheet of steel and I'm gonna make a template and then we're gonna cut this thing out. I've now taken the frame and turned it into a cardboard template and then turned the cardboard template into a wooden form, which I'm now going to use to cut out some metal and wrap some metal around it and weld it all together. And hopefully it all works. We'll see. So I just cut out the metal and all looks good. I had a little bit of trouble breaking the metal apart, the cut metal from the non-cut metal. It does make a clean cut, it's just if your hand is wobbly, then you know it doesn't make as clean of a cut. You can see down here it actually came out really nice and smooth. It's just, you know, if the wood that you're resting against is bumpy, then the cut will be bumpy too. All right, so I've now rested the cutout steel piece in the frame and it seems to be just about the right shape. With a little massaging, I think it will fit. Here we have the new frame in place with a top and a bottom tack welded into it. And the new uh, frame rail is actually tack welded into the old frame and it has the shock mount in place. So it's looking pretty good. So this was inside the frame rail. Let's see what it includes. Looks like a lot of metal. And this is why I'm replacing the frame rail, because most of the metal has turned to dust. Here we have the driver's side inner frame rail all made, and it's hanging out with its template friends. So now I've laid the frame down flat and I've reinforced the whole thing with a whole bunch of angle iron and I've measured everything about 10 million times. You can see I have both shock towers back in place. The next thing I'm going to do is actually cut the whole back of the frame off, this kind of back U section, and I'm going to weld some new metal in place. And then once I'm done with that, then I'll go back to the wheel arches I don't know really what they're called, but this section right here, and I'll replace all this. So, one step at a time.
We are now at the back of the frame and this is the driver's side rear. And you can see I put a hinge on that side and a hinge on this side, which is attached to this rear perch where you mount your rear control arm. And I did that so that this thing stays in the right place when I make the new frame rail. So I'm just gonna pop it back up, weld it in place, and then later on down the line, I'll sandblast that so it actually looks good. And then up here, I cut the spring perch off, found a big hole behind it, so that's cool. And now that that is out of the way, I'm gonna cut this off. In fact, I'm gonna cut this off too, but I'm gonna cut this all off and make a new one. Good news, the outer frame rail fits over my wooden buck perfectly, so that means I can reuse this wooden buck to make this new frame rail. So that's pretty cool. We can now see the inside of the driver's side inner frame rail attached to the back metal, and we even have the mount on a hinge. So now I have this uh, outer metal frame rail just tacked in place temporarily, and I'm actually gonna make some, uh, they're called uh, fish plates that'll go in here, and they basically go on the back side where these two pieces of metal meet, and then we'll drill some holes through it, and we'll kind of um, do some welds in there to hold it all together so it's not just a butt weld holding the frame together, because that's not good. And now we're gonna weld a plate on the top and get the curve right, and then we'll weld one on the bottom, get that curve right, and we'll just kind of keep building until this works. You can see where I welded the old frame to the new frame, and then of course I welded up all of the edges of these rear arches that I made. Here are all of the frame rails that I've replaced and built new. You can see these things are trash. They are super rusty and rotted out, especially on the bottom side. You can see there's holes in them in various spots here, up here. It's just super thin metal, really crunchy. You can see this one folds up like this. The whole thing is a mess. So I'm glad I have all new metal and hopefully you're enjoying uh, the show that goes along with it. So I just bought a laser level and I found that my frame is totally screwed up. So let me show you what I did. So I've set up the laser level to shoot a line down the center of my frame, through the center here, across here, and to the back. And the back section is all new, pretty much from like this point rearward, all new metal. Except for like the brackets that I cut off, this, that, this, that. So let me show you how far off the laser is and you're gonna be su very surprised like I was. All right, front cross member right in the center of the hole and then it cruises down here through the center of the frame, through the center of this hole and then we start getting into the new metal. Right here, looks pretty much in the middle. And then you get to right here. And this is the center of this bar. And notice where the laser level is. So right behind the rear axle, hold on, let me turn around. So it's pretty square up until about this point. And then right here and here, the whole frame is moved over this way, about an inch and a half, maybe even two inches. So I apparently welded this on crooked, but I think the reason I did that is because I put it in the exact same place it was before. I made all kinds of brackets and stuff, which you probably saw earlier in this video, and I put it in the exact same spot it was, and I think the frame was bent. So I replaced the bent frame with a bent frame. So now what I have to do is knock off the welds that I put here and over here and on the corners. Luckily, I didn't weld everything completely. It's all just kind of tacked in place. But now I need to straighten out the whole rear frame and then re-weld it 
and make sure the laser level tells me that I'm level again. So it's a pretty wild situation that I didn't expect, and uh, I guess we're gonna get started. 83 years later, the frame's upside down, it's a little smoky in the garage, and the laser's right in the center of the back of the frame. All right, ignore the disaster here, but here is where I spliced the new metal to the old metal. And you can see there's the weld line here. So what I have done is, hold on, let me see if I can hold it and the camera. So I've made a kind of additional support plate. Some people call these fish plates. Normally a fish plate is kind of like a diamond shape, but I made just kind of a giant one to go over the whole area. And then I put a bend in it so it can go over this bend in the frame as well. And it also is gonna be welded to that. So it will add some structure to this, uh, the frame, and then of course the middle of the frame because these X frames are known to twist. Hopefully that will add a little bit more structure in that area as well. Now I am going to weld it all together. So uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, a lot has happened. We now have the rear frame almost 100% welded up. If we get down close, you'll notice that there's some surface rust on it and that's because I don't heat my garage year round. So it's like, you know, damp air and stuff. But anyways, so this is all welded up now and this is kind of welded in place. It's not done yet. I still have to weld around the edges a little more. And then down here, you can see this is all new. Well, basically everything's new. And then right here, Behind this plate is where I welded in the pieces together, which I'm sure you saw just a second ago. And I just made one giant fish plate to go over this, and then I drilled some holes in it, and I welded uh, some holes in there. So now this is all reinforced where the new frame meets the old frame. And then, of course, on the other side, it is the same. So we'll take a quick look at that. Over here, you see we have another... Uh, fish plate in here and I also welded the fish plate right here to the mount just to secure the mount even more than it already was it's obviously welded in all the same spots as it was from the factory but then you know I have another plate on there just to hold it even stronger in case I were to put like hydraulics in this or something it'll be a little extra reinforcements I still have to weld up the seam here all the way around I have to finish welding up this spot then down here you'll see this is just kind of loosely attached I have to fix the hole in this. I'm just gonna make a new one probably and weld that up. And then of course in the back, if you recall way back at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that these, this like replacement panel here didn't have the angled pieces right here and then down here for where the body sits on it. Strangely, it's actually a different size. It's probably like, I don't know, four inches right here and it's something like six and a half over here. I forget the exact measurement, but it's wider on the driver's side than it is on the passenger side. So I still have to uh, weld these, these corners up. And other than that, there's not a lot left. I might end up actually boxing in the inside of the frame. I haven't really decided on that yet, but my first step is to finish up all the mounts and I'm probably gonna sandblast the whole frame. Then I'll throw the whole thing in primer and I'll start assembling the frame just as like a first time assembly. The astute Impala viewer will notice that I still need to actually make the bumper mounts right here. I believe they go something like this. This is just a cardboard template I made. And I am going to cut that out of metal, weld it in there, and then I'll test fit the bumper on here to make sure that fits. Other than, other than a couple of bumper mounts, fixing the rear body mounts and making sure they're fully welded, and then finishing up the welding around these mounts, the frame is pretty much done. So I'll end up just sandblasting the whole thing once the outside temperature gets a little warmer. And yeah, then I'll throw it in primer for now until um, uh, I've fully built the thing, got it all nice with all the suspension parts on. And then uh, I guess we'll throw it onto the car and see what it looks like. So that's it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one and I appreciate you sticking around to watch the whole thing. I tried to get the whole frame repair in one video and it was really hard to do, especially over the span of a few months because I had to take a break in between to get some heat in my garage. I'm not sure you can see my breath right now. The heat is actually on, but 
the cold air from the concrete is actually uh, fighting the heater right now. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you following along with this project. I actually have a new project coming up soon that I think that you'll enjoy. It's very much not like this one, but it is very much one of my favorite cars. So I'm very excited to show you that. So stay tuned for, uh, for the next project, which will be happening at the same time as this one. All right, thank you all. We'll see you next time.